I'm going to show you how you can grow a $100 account into a $100,000 account in just one year. And I'll show you exactly how you can do that in a second. So the biggest thing first off is consistency. It's going to take a lot of consistency to get to that point and it's all about compound interest. So if you are able to uh, take home 10% on your account a week, that is enough to compound. Within a year of trading, you should be able to take home at least $100,000 with a consistent 10%, 2% a day, 10% a week trading. So guys, I'm gonna show you exactly here. It's not rocket science. Compound interest, it's how all the billionaires, millionaires make their money. Um, growing your money and keeping your money growing instead of taking it out, that's how most people grow their wealth. So compound interest is very important uh, to be able to grow a large amount of wealth with not necessarily having to invest too much money. So you guys can look this up for yourself. There's a website called compounddaily.org uh, slash calculator. So in here you can input uh, your initial amount that you're going to start with. So let's say you start with a $100 account and you'd make 2% a day, which is about 10% a week. Um, and 365 days for a year you trade. Uh, as long as you leave 100% of your money in, you don't take any of your money out. If you calculate this, within one whole year of trading, you will have turned $100 into 137 grand. And that's exactly how you're gonna grow your money. So this isn't rocket science, it's pretty easy stuff. Um, the biggest part though is keeping consistent really learning a solid strategy that will yield these returns. Yes, there's gonna be days where you're gonna lose, there's gonna be days where you win, but overall, if you can take home a solid, like on average, 10% a week, uh, within a couple of years, you can definitely compound a small amount of money into a very large amount of money. Okay, so the way you're gonna do this is you need a very solid strategy, and in my other videos, I talk about the strategy a lot. This is the strategy I like to use personally, and um, the reason why the strategy is so good is because the way I trade, I like to get really, really tight stop losses and really large take profits. You know, I can risk a little amount of money to make a lot amount of money. So most of the time I'm only risking anything around one to 2% per trade. So if you risk only 1% to make 10%, you take one trade a week and you hit your 10% big profit, you're done for the week. You don't need to trade till the next week. So, but if you're only taking, you know, one to one trades, let's say for example, you're taking a sell up here, you know, you're risking, let's say you risk 15 pips to make 15 pips, right? And then you know, let's say you lose the next trade, you're back to, to ground zero, right? But if you were to learn how to enter on really, really tight stop losses, let's say, you know, a four pip stop loss, you know, you're risking only four pips to make 30 pips. So let's say you risk 1%, you're gonna make 7% off of this one trade. Then after that, you can lose seven trades in a row before you actually start losing any of your profit. So this trade is, is a, so this style of trading is a really good way to grow small accounts. So I'll show you an example of uh, the way my strategy works. So on the 15 minute here, we have a downtrend. And what I like to do is mark out the lower highs. So for example, in a downtrend, they're made up of lower highs, right? So we have a lower high here, a lower high there, lower high there, lower high there, and that's it, right? These don't count as lower highs because they weren't, the bottoms weren't broken. So these are gonna be our lower highs, right? Now what we're looking for, it's really simple, is we're looking for price just to break above our lower highs before coming back down grabbing liquidity, knocking out stop losses of retail traders, and then going up into profit. So you may be wondering like, where do I enter? How do I get into these trades? The secret to sniper entries, you have to set your entry where most retail traders will be putting their stop losses. Because the reality is the market is very manipulated and banks, the brokers, the whales, they'll manipulate the price to go where majority of the retail stop losses are. They wanna knock you out of your trades, they wanna take your liquidity, they wanna enter their trades, and they know where your stop losses are. They know where your money is. Um, so we, so how, but how do we find out like where that is, that's the hardest part, right? Is, is nobody knows where the retail trader stop losses are. But, you know, over years of experience, you, got, you get to kind of have an insight of, you know, they like to manipulate price to go. You kind of know yourself, you know, at, at one point I was, I was just a, a regular trader. I used to put my stop losses in these certain areas. So I kind of have an idea of what, what they're doing. So for example, and a, a big example I like to use, you know, if you never saw what was gonna happen here and you saw this, right? 
most people like to enter on support zones, right? Like, you know, I don't, I don't listen. I don't care about support. I don't care about resistance. Those are all terms for like retail traders. Yes, they can be valid sometimes, but most of the time support and resistance gets broken like all the time. So you want to be looking for these areas where retail traders will be putting their stop losses. And the thing is for my strategy, I like to base it off of retail traders who use support and resistance. So if you think about it, this is a major support zone, or at least people, most people would say this is a major support zone. And a lot of people are looking for what they call retests of these support zones. So for example, like this is a major support came up. It was retested there. It was retested once again right there. And they might think that this is a nice little retest here to buy on, right? So a lot of traders are gonna enter like right on this kind of blue line here. And most of them will put their stop loss what? Below the recent, you know, areas like here, right? A lot of people put them here. A lot of people will put it like there, right? So, and a lot of people like to say like, you know, place it five pips or whatever below the, the support. All right, so most people see this as kind of like a support and be like, oh, you know, I'll be safe here if I place my stop loss a little bit below here. Okay, so then, you know, place their stop loss right there. And what happens? Price comes down, knocks them out of the trade, and then goes up straight up into profit, right? It happens all the time. Everyone's been through it. Every, I guarantee everyone watching this video, this has happened to them at least once if you've traded before. So knowing this, you'll now understand that the best place to enter is where you would normally put your stop loss. So now how I trade personally, I'm gonna get rid of all this, right? Before I see this coming, this is what I see. This looks like a perfect trade setup to me because I know exactly where price is going to go. I know that the retail traders are gonna buy here. I know that the price is gonna be manipulated to knock them out down here. So what do I look for? I look for areas below this support that have a lot of wicks. What do wicks mean? Wicks means liquidity. There's a lot of liquidity in these areas because there's a lot of orders coming in and coming out. So for example, this wick here, these wicks here, that wick there. There's a lot going on in this area, quite a bit going on in this area. So now what you can do is enter somewhere right in the middle. You, know, you take the average of all these wicks and you go somewhere right in the middle. So mark that middle. That's where I want to enter. That's where I want to enter. So now what? Okay, I put a buy limit right there. I usually like to set my stop loss around six, six-ish pips. Let's do six and a half. It all just depends on the pair. You'll learn this over time. Um, certain pairs you can put a really tight stop loss, but other pairs I find CAD CHF can be a little volatile when they're grabbing liquidity. So I like to set it something around six and a half pips. So if we come back here, we'll see price came down, knocked all these stop losses out, set my pot stop loss to like six and a half pips. Look at that, perfect. Comes right into the zone. And then from there, it's easy. Just climb all the way up and take an easy 7% win, right? If I risk 1%, it's a 7% win, right? And that's only me. I choose to use 1% risk. I know a lot of people that use 2%, 3%, even 4%. So if you used 2% uh, risk here, you'd make about 14% on the day, right? Like this trade played out within, you know, one day. It took you a day to make 14%. You know, a lot of people are looking for 10% in a year, let alone a day, right? This is, this is really easy stuff. Um, but this will only work if you're consistent, if you actually play out the trades and you stick to these rules, because if you don't, you, you must, you have to study these rules. You have to study the strategy because if you don't, you know, you might take a lot of trades that you think the strategy is going to work. It could be a different trade, could be a different strategy, you know, it could not be valid, right? You got to wait for all these validations. It has to break one of these areas, it has to break one of these lower highs. I've taken trades myself where, you know, it would break an area like this. This isn't a lower high because this bottom wasn't broken. So this is not a lower high. This is a lower high, that's a lower high. And you have to be patient. You gotta wait for that price to come back down to your area. You know, a lot of people might enter early, might enter up here. You know, with a five pitch stop loss, you would've got knocked out. You have to be patient. You gotta wait for this area to be fulfilled. You know, you gotta wait for it to grab liquidity around this area. And you know it's gonna come down there, so you gotta wait. Can't get greedy. 
That's the biggest thing. It's like the hardest thing about this industry is everyone's trying to make money, but everyone's being super greedy, right? 14% a day. You know, even if you were doing 5% a day, you know, we'll come back here, start with $100. Let's say you're making 5% a day, right? Which is very doable, right? Maybe not long, long term, but for, you know, a good amount of time, you could manage 5% a day, only risking 1%, right? Um, let's say you did this for 200 days, not even a whole year, right? Look at that. 1,729,000. Like, obviously, you know, this, I'd like to say, yeah, yeah, you can make a million dollars doing this. That's not realistic. You're not going to be trading 5% a day for 200 days straight, right? But even so, this is so much more above $100,000, you know, like, even if you traded for 60 days, two months and did this, right? You make $2,000 from 100, right? But that's why, as you can see, it's time that grows money and not money that grows money, right? Just another 30 days, right? If we go to 90 days, so there's now three months of trading. Just an extra month of trading. That's eight grand, right? One more month, 120 days. This is where things start to change, right? This goes to show that time grows money. One more month and you make 34K. With every month, you're gaining way more than you would expect. One more month, 150 days. Calculate that. That's 150 grand. 150 grand, 150 days. From a hundred dollar account like this isn't rocket science this is this is compound interest study the strategy be consistent and you can grow a really small account